Hello everyone, welcome to the Innovation Lab. In this video, we are going to talk about the under voltage protection setting of this DC to DC boost converter. And also we are going to do a quick uh, test to measure the actual efficiency of this boost converter. So the idea to make this video actually came from a question that I received from one of our subscribers and asking about the uh, UVP setting of this uh, DC to DC boost converter. And that made me realize that the previous videos and review videos that I've made on this converter, I did not talk about the UVP. So I'm making this video to go over that. And in the end, we'll kind of try to uh, fold in an efficiency measurement into this video as well. Before we get started, I would like to take some time to uh, thank you guys for all your comments, all your constructive feedback and all your questions. I really, really appreciate it. And if you're new to our channel, please make sure that you go check out our videos and the uh, earlier videos that I made on this DC to DC boost converter to show how you can use it as a cheap and reliable battery charger and we have multiple other projects that we're working on so if you would like to see those make sure that you subscribe to the innovation lab so you get notified when we release those videos all right my friends uh, let's get started all right as you can see here the very first thing that i did was to design a 3d printed board mount and the purpose of this is to uh, is both for convenience uh, for doing my testing and also to provide enough cooling for the system by lifting up the uh, board so that way the fan will have access to uh, you know a lot enough air to cool the system from the bottom and to do that all I had to do was to make a quick and very simple 3d uh, model with the dimensions of the board and I had to uh, you know make measurements of the uh, uh, length and width of the uh, DC to DC boost converter and after that I plugged in the measurements into my model and there you have it we have um, a card holder that I'm going to use for this testing and uh, pretty much all I had to do after that was to put it in, into my 3d printer and I printed it in in less than two hours and, and there you have it and I guess I would say that would be the uh, major advantage of kind of having a uh, 3d printer that you can use to you know if you can th think of any shape or any object that you need or enclosures like this guy here i actually made those here as well right. so so now let's talk about the uvp setting of this boost converter so as we know uvp stands for under voltage protection and what that means is the threshold voltage where you want your boost converter to stop operating, to stop boosting the output. So, and I will explain a little bit more. So for example, if your nominal voltage, if you're using this device to boost an input voltage coming in from your battery, and your battery voltage is normally at 24 volts, and you want to tell this converter to say, hey, if my battery voltage drops down to 20 volts, I want you to stop boosting the output. So what you now do is using this potentiometer here, you set the under voltage threshold that you're gonna be working with at 20 volts. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is to show you exactly how you can do that. I know for some of us, this could be very tricky to set and you wonder how do I set this? All right, let's get to it. Let me show you how you do it. So for those of us who may have a need to set an under voltage protection level that is not the standardized nominal voltages like 12 volts, uh, 24 volts, 36 volts, 48 volts that you will normally get from your battery systems. So if you have a need to set your under voltage protection levels to say 20 volts, 19 volts, 18 volts, how do you do that? So you will basically need a variable input um, voltage source. So in this case, I'm using my DIY wall power supply that you have seen here, because this actually allows me to vary the input voltage or input current, and I'm monitoring it using this digital battery capacity tester 
that I've made. So what I've done is that I made two of them. So this guy here monitors what's going on at the input of the converter. And this guy monitors what's going on at the output of the converter. So we have configured our input voltage to 20 volts because that's where we want the under voltage threshold to be at. So now the next thing that you have to do is you go in here where you have this UVP potentiometer. So you adjust the UVP potentiometer until you see the UVP LED turn on. So what that tells the converter is that once the UVP LED is on, the converter now recognizes that you have set your under voltage protection level at 20 volts. So let's go ahead and do that. And as we do that, we'll see what's going on at the output. So right now we have 20 volts coming in and the boost converter boosted it up to 27.5. Maybe we can increase it to make it a little bit more obvious. All right. So now you can see our output voltage is at 42 volts. We are boosting our 20 volts coming in to 42 volts. Now see what happens when we adjust our, our UVP to 20 volts. So at this point, our LED is on meaning that the converter now recognizes that the UVP is set at 20 volts and let's see what's going on at the output now. As you can see, the output dropped down to 19.8 volts, which is basically approximately what's coming in at the input. So yeah, so that tells us that the converter now recognizes that the under voltage protection is at 20 volts. So the next thing we are going to do is to increase that input voltage and see what happens. If we, if we can get out of the under voltage protection by just increasing the input voltage. All right, so we have increased the voltage from 20 volts to 20.8 volts. And let's see what's going on at the converter. So as you can see here, the UVP LED has turned off and let's see what's going on at the output. So here we can see that output came back to 42.1 volts. All right, so this goes to show that the UVP protection setting uh, works as expected and uh, this could come in handy depending on what you are doing with the converter you may not even need it it might be helpful for as an additional protection layer for your design or whatever you are using the converter for all right my friends now that we have learned how to uh, adjust the uvp setting so the next thing we are going to do is to perform an efficiency test on this uh, DC to DC boost converter. All right, let's get to it. All right, my friends. So what we have here is a setup for conducting the efficiency test. So what we have here is a 24 volt lithium phosphate battery pack. And the plan is to use this uh, battery pack to supply input voltage to the uh, DC to DC boost converter and then we will now step up that voltage to about 70 to 75 volts and use it to drive this load here. However, for some good uh, precision, so uh, my plan here is to use um, two digital uh, power monitors, one on the input and one on the output. So that way we can see what's going in voltage current power that is going into the boost converter then we can also see what's going out, voltage, current, power, again. Because in the end, efficiency measurement is all about, um, it kind of boils down to output power divided by input power, then that would tell you how efficient the, uh, the converter is. For the test load, what I had to do was to build up this network of series parallel uh, 12 volts 20 watt halogen bulbs. And the reason for doing that is because I am going to attempt to drive up the uh, output of this uh, DC to DC boost converter to about uh, 75 to 80 volts. And I do not have any, uh, any gadget here or anything I can use as a load. They can go that high in value. 
Usually I will try to use my uh, power inverter to, uh, to serve as the load. So that way when I connect the power inverter, I'll put more load on the output of the inverter to uh, kind of simulate the load that way. But my power inverter can only take a maximum input voltage of about 30 volts. So that using that will not work. So I had to build up this board just for the sake of the testing. And I'm gonna have to do this as fast as I can because if I leave it for too long, it might burn up the uh, Vero board that I'm using here. All right, my friends, uh, at this point, we have everything connected. And all we really have to do at this point is to connect the load. And after that, the plan is to slowly adjust the output voltage until we get to about uh, 72 volts DC. And we will also adjust the output current as needed. So, and as we do that, we'll keep an eye on the input uh, digital power monitor and the output uh, digital power monitor. Uh, the, the goal is to measure the efficiency and basically it boils down to output power divided by input power. So having these two power monitors will help us accomplish that. And another good thing about the way we are conducting this test is that since we are recording everything on video, you can go back and rewind and look at at any point in the experiment to look at what the efficiency of the converter is. So as you can see, as we as we increase the output voltage, the power the power delivered will be going up and going up. So we can go back and run the numbers to see, okay, at this amount of power, this was this was what we measured as the efficiency. All right, my friends, let's go ahead and do that. And we have to do it quickly because we don't want it, our bulbs to burn out. So we have the load connected, as you can see. You see the bulbs uh, light up. So now let's go ahead and adjust the output voltage. As you can see, we're now at 72 volts. All right, at 72 volts, we are drawing about 8.2 amps with an input current of 31 amps, input power of 752, and delivered power of 592. All right, our bulbs are beginning to smoke a little bit, so we have to like take it down. All right, my friends, we have come to the end of the video. Thank you for hanging in there and for making it to the end of this video. So in the first portion of the video, we set out to show you guys how to set the input on the voltage threshold of this DC to DC boost converter, as we realized that it was something that we have not really done on this DC to DC boost converter. For the second portion of the video, we wanted to do an efficiency measurement to see how this DC to DC boost converter will perform under load. And with that test, we were able to get to a maximum load of 594 watts. And then we measured the input to see how much input power was required to drive that load. We were measuring about 751 watts. So when you do the math, so it was showing us that with a load of about 594 watts, the efficiency of this boost converter was right around 79% or close to 80%. On that note, one thing I would like to mention will be that we should really take that efficiency number with a little grain of salt because this experiment is not perfect. So what I'm using as my load here, as my test load here, are these um, halogen lamps, which is basically uh, mostly a resistive load. So this converter could perform better with uh, maybe a more capacitive load. That was the reason why I was saying that. So, and I know a lot of you will say, uh, maybe I have a lot of losses on the cable that I'm using. So what I'm using here are 10 gauge cables. And uh, if you do the research, 10 gauge cables are supposed to be able to drive 30 amps of current. Given that this converter is currently limited to 30 amps anyways, so I considered it appropriate to use 10 gauge cables 
to perform this test. All right, my friends, I hope you guys had fun watching this video. And if you did, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And uh, if you're new to our channel, don't forget to go check out our other videos that we have made with this uh, DC to DC boost converter, showing how you can use them as efficient battery chargers or how you can even try to use them as uh, solar charge controllers. All right, my friends, uh, I hope you had fun watching this video and I will see you guys in the next video.